Hello watch fam, I'm the Champy Panda and welcome to my affordable watch channel where I review watches, unbox them, first impressions as well as do quick mods like this video we have here. Today we are doing something that is uh, I guess kind of trending on my later party, I think it was trending last year. It's 2021 now, I'm a bit late. I'm going to mod the Casio G-Shock GA2100, aptly named or dubbed by the community as the Cassie Oak because of its resemblance to the AP Royal Oak. So in this a tutorial, is it a tutorial or more how to, we're going to take our original G-Shock and put a metal case onto it which would likely resemble the Royal Oak. It even, even comes with the band that you know is integrated into the case. So the case I'm using today is purchased from AliExpress for uh, 115 Australian dollars that I bought it for. The Cassie Oak that I bought was 144 so it's almost doubling the cost. I'm not sure why I do this to myself but you know I guess this is why you're here too. <laughs> In this one, we're using the third generation case. So if you're searching up the second and the third generation, there's a key difference. The second generation, um, the band is not integrated into the case. I, I believe you can kind of change it out and have a different band with the metal case. In this third generation, the band is integrated into the actual case. The reason behind that, from what I've read at least, is that the second generation, the band, the metal band that comes with the case, scratches the actual carbon core the G-Shock watch uh, whereas the integrated band in the third generation prevents that from happening so we'll see how that looks after I've uh, kind of built it come with me in changing the original G-Shock into the new modded metal case G-Shock coming right up after this intro Welcome back guys. So in front of me is the conversion kit for the Casio or the GA2100. Oh man, the Casio G-Shock naming convention uh, never fails to baffle me. So this conversion kit I got from AliExpress for uh, I think $115. However, when I just checked uh, a moment ago, it is now $97. This is Australian by the way. So this could be had for closer to $70 or so dollars uh, US. Now in it, let's unbox this real quick. It comes with a few screws. I think these are the screws for the different the areas in the case. Oh my gosh, I will get to it first. It comes with a screwdriver. I think I'll just use whatever they provide. Inside here, if I can get it open, we have the assortment of things that it comes with. So additional screwdrivers, I, I believe it will be just for like the different screws in here, the band and I think that's it. That, that's all it comes with. Nice and simple. So let's check out the case first. It's nicely wrapped, but I'll remove it. The metal feels substantial. Um, it does. It feels strong and sturdy. Wow. I don't know if the camera does this justice, but it is extremely shiny. Like they really went all out on this case, uh, obviously to mimic the Royal Oak, the AP Royal Oak, obviously. But let's see what the rest is. Check out the band. On the third generation, I think it really mimics the Royal Oak band as well. So you can call it homage, uh, if you will. Oh, the satisfying sound of ripping plastic. Okay, so here's the band. It feels really solid. There is a bit of wiggle and it jingles slightly. Uh, so I would put this in terms of the band wise, I'll put this on the same level as Seiko, maybe slightly better than Seiko and Orient. Uh, it is a butterfly clap. Um, very solid. Oop. So that's the band and the case. Now, as I have the Casio in front of me, I believe that the conversion is relatively simple. So what we need to do is remove these screws. There's four of them. And then the internal carbon, um, a carbon core, I believe the, so the internal carbon core will just pop out after that. So you do not need to unscrew these screws. Th that would actually give you access to the actual movement to change the battery, which we don't need to do. As you can see here, there's a quick release for the strap. I believe I need to remove that and then remove the four screws. So let's get onto it. Keep in mind that this is fully reversible. So uh, if you were to change this to the new case and you feel like, okay, I don't like it anymore, you can always reverse it. What we're left with is just the, the actual, I guess the watch itself um, with other straps. So this requires a, uh, I think it's called Phillips. 
I never know my terminology. I always call it the, the plus screwdriver. So what we do is we need to unscrew that. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. If you have better screwdrivers at home, I implore you to use it. Uh, I failed. I Okay, I'm going to use this little thing here. I'm going to use this little thing here to hold my uh, screws. Uh, this screw was grinding, we started to grind that. Um, so maybe don't use the screwdriver that was provided because it started grinding the, the actual, you call it a thread, the metal part of the screws out and you can damage the screw like that. So what I'm going to do, I'll be right back. I'll get my own uh, set of screwdrivers. Uh, I'm back. Uh, I've decided to use my own screwdrivers, but a flathead, which will still work. Oh. Some of these are screwed really tightly as a heads up. So just use finesse, use um, the Midas touch, if that makes sense. Okay, all right guys. So all the screws have been taken out, as you can see. And what we need to do is just pop the case out. Because this is basically the, um, the resin case. Is that what they call it? The resin or plastic case, which um, adds additional protection. But you can kind of apply it off like this with my fingers. So I can't wind nails, it's really hard to dig in, but if you've got nails, it'll be a lot harder. So, I mean, easier. So there you go, that was easy. You just popped it off real real quick. Um, was that, which one's up orientation? Here we go. So it was like this, pop, comes off. Then the next thing you do is pop this bad boy on. Uh, now, I'm trying to figure out whether there is an orientation to this, and I believe it, ex it does not. It is an exact octagon, and it should fit anyway. So you don't need to go hardcore with the dust cleaning. And uh, there you go. So now it's fully on. Already is looking like a brand new watch. Ridiculously simple. Now all I need to do is put the screws back in. Now never over tighten. Just tighten it enough. I, I like to do opposing screws first so they can hold it in place. As a heads up, they do provide a few spare ones from AliExpress. There we have it. It's now locked in place with the screws and uh, looking mighty royal oakish now, isn't it? From afar, can I fool anyone? No, I can't. That wasn't really the point. The point is, it's a metal case for a uh, resin G-Shock and it is absolutely beautiful. I did mention that I got this for like $115. The watch itself only costs $144, so I've doubled the cost <laughs> of the watch. Is it worth it? I don't know, we'll get there. So now, next thing I need to do is install this band. And this band has, basically it'll, it'll clip on here. And then uh, I'll need to install, uh, I guess like a, um, a rivet or a screw into that hole. And luckily, this is where these bad boys comes into play. Uh, the, the long ones here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out and uh, install it. It looks like it goes in both ends, like, yeah, cause it's not long enough. So I believe you need two for each case. So let's try that. Let's make sure that there isn't a left and right. I, from what I can see, um, you can't really install it wrong because it's it's like perfectly even on both sides and it's a butterfly collapse in the middle. So either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, I suspect they designed it that way. Uh, I was just trying to see if it fits. Look, so it will fit like this and it will almost look like it's integrated. I, I, actually, you know what? It is integrated. The third generation, just so you guys know, if you're buying um, something like this, there's the second generation, which is cheaper. Uh, supposedly the, the strap is not integrated. It, it started damaging the case itself. The actual watch case, not, not even the... So the carbon core started damaging it. Okay, so this one uses a f uh, flat head. And uh, you just screw it in by the looks of it. Uh, no, it, do it does not. My bad. Give me a second. Uh, let's try this again. So I've got to put it on the other side. And uh, here we go. Now it screws in. So I, I think I just didn't get it in the in the then the hole just tight enough. So I've got to screw this in as well on the other side. Wait, hang on. So right now, just so you guys know what the hell is happening, the screw is refusing to screw in. Oh, now it is. Because I think it was at a bad angle. So just so you guys know, I had a bit of issue screwing those screw in um, because 
you need to be at the right angle. So sometimes you push it in and it doesn't screw. You just have to jiggle the, the jiggle the, the the bracelet a little bit so that it can actually loop in properly. Otherwise, if you keep forcing it, it's gonna break. So I have to take it back out, push it back in, jiggle a little bit, get in the right angle, then screw it in. Uh, same for the other side. Now, let's finish off the, the link on the other side. So put this pin in. Uh, right now it's not refusing to go in, so we take it back out. Try again. When in doubt, try again. Um, okay, jiggle a little bit. Okay, I think this is good now. Okay, somehow it's going in now. I, I just had to angle it properly. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's done. Okay, looks like all of them are in. And it's, it's super sturdy now. Like it's not moving at all. And there's no budge. And I believe this was... Let me let me just quickly check. The lug to lug has definitely increased. So here's my trusty caliper. Oh, it's 45 before. Really? Yeah, it was 45 before. Uh, and now it has actually reduced to 44. Give or take. Let me make sure I've zeroed it. Um, but lug to lug, I mean, you know what? It's it's like here now. About it's like 53. My gosh, it's it's, it's gonna be huge. Because I'm wearing right now, a uh, quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Timex Huckberry Cola Sports Watch, uh, which is a Timex security issue. So this is gonna look massive on it. It looks like I can resize it uh, using these kind of screws. I haven't resized it yet, obviously, but let's just chuck on the wrist and see how it looks. And here is how it kind of looks on the wrist. I mean, obviously I haven't resized it. And um, the Timex is a 38 mil as a reference. This is like, Freaking huge! Oh my god, it's huge! But wow, does it look like uh, re really like even the band, the integrated bracelet, really oil look, uh, oil rogue looking now. Now I think this third gen it does stick out a bit because of the how would you call it like the inter integrated um bracelet and the lug just kind of curves down a little bit. So there's a bit of like like holes there. Like even if I was to resize it, there, there's like a gap there. Whereas my, you know, like the Timex doesn't, it's got a hooded, hooded lug and it kind of goes down. So that's how it looks on the wrist. I mean, I'm going to do some like uh, macros so you can kind of see the before and after shot. Let me take the Timex off. So this will be how it looks on my wrist. Now my wrist is six and six and a quarter inch. So 6.25 inch. Uh, so it's very, very slim. I think you're going to need a seven, eight, seven inch wrist to, to pull this off. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to. I'm gonna keep it on the bracelet now that I look at it. But it looks cool though, look. But dang it, it looks so big. I reckon some of you guys are like, it's a G-Shock, it's supposed to be big. What's wrong with you? But the thing is, once you got a metal band on it, it doesn't really look like a G-Shock anymore. And you kind of feel like it's a little bit too big right now. <laughs> uh, but anyways, that that's basically how you change the original Raisin uh, G-Shock case. If I zoom in. Uh, into the metal case. Uh, for this Casio uh, G-Shock GA2100. Let's look at some before and after shots right now. And then we'll flip the camera around and have a, have a chat. So welcome back watch fam. So that was my uh, conversion tutorial or how to in terms of changing the original GA2100 G-Shock Casio into the metal case from the resin case. And uh, right now it looks really good. I gotta admit, um, it's, it's looking really good off the wrist. 
However, on the wrist, um, it doesn't have that same effect because of this bulging, kind of unbendable, like, what is this, like the band? It just cannot bend, largely because of how it's actually designed and also because it's integrated into the actual case. As I mentioned at the intro and probably during the conversion uh, uh, tutorial, um, the version two, which you might consider buying seeing this now, um, the band isn't integrated into the case so it won't slope like this i think it's kind of like i don't know if it's hooded or not but it's definitely it won't be integrated like this and the benefit of that is that it would actually kind of taper down a little bit more whereas this version 3 where it's integrated into the case it can't taper it actually bulges on the edge so for someone like me with really kind of thin wrist with six and a half six and a quarter inch i wish it was six and a half a six and a quarter inch wrist it just overhangs way too much so i'm thinking i'll wear it a couple of times and if it just doesn't work out the way i want i might just change it back into the original resin um it, it'll be lighter um it'll probably be more shock resistant or i guess the thickness is exactly the same so there's no too much difference there but I'll definitely have a better enjoyment in terms of it'll look better on my wrist especially when I said that for me it's all about form less than function in, in terms of a watch that's what I look for at least you might be completely different anyways hopefully you enjoyed that uh, tutorial if you can call that or how to of uh, how to change your GA2100 into from a resin case to a metal case now if you enjoyed that please hit that like button consider subscribing if you haven't already I post a lot of uh, reviews and boxing and you know kind of tutorials like this on a weekly basis I think I'll be doing two videos a week from now on but let's just say it's one one post a, a week uh, and uh, leave a comment and tell me what you thought of uh, the, co the whole process that has happened and if you actually did this yourself and do you find if you got the version 2 and version 3 next to each other do you have this problem as well as me like this kind of bulging effect on the side uh, it could just be me i don't know anyways uh you guys have been amazing and i'm the Chopi panda and i catch you in the next one peace